Hello, fearless leaders. This is Naomi Tucker with the Planet on a Posted podcast. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. It has certainly been a long couple of weeks. Today, we're going to be discussing leading your teams through the coronavirus or COVID-19 outbreak. This is season two, episode nine, and I'm just looking forward to getting started. Before we do, though, I want to ask you to go ahead and like and share this podcast if you don't mind. It is um, very helpful to be able to just share and get the word out there about this podcast. Secondly, I just wanted to see if I have any readers in the house. If you are a reader or if you don't mind picking up a book in order to learn and to grow as a leader, please join me on April 8th. We're going to be discussing Everything is Figure Outable. It's by Marie Forleo. It's a wonderful book. And Marie's just going to talk to us about, you know, figuring everything out. And you know what, event leaders, we have a lot to figure out. We have the coronavirus happening right now. There's a lot of shifts and changes that are probably going on in all of our businesses. So that will be an excellent book to be able to dig into and see how we can apply it to our world. So get it on Audible, get it on Amazon, get it however you want to get it. And just join me on April 8th. We'll be having that discussion on Facebook, um, Facebook Live, so I would be happy if you would join me. Now, I also wanted to make sure that if you haven't went over to our website, go to our website and sign up for the newsletters. I do send out a newsletter and I try to send it weekly, every couple weeks to be able just to inform you of the blog post and podcast episodes and, you know, maybe things that I'm reading. I would love to continue to share that with you. If that's something that you're interested in, head over to the website so that you can get filled in and you have everything that you need and you get your fill of Planet on a Post-it. So let's dig in. So event planners, you all know that there is a big, huge global virus that's going around right now that's called the COVID-19. This is a new strain of the coronavirus that um, was recently detected or a few months ago was detected in China and basically now is represented over 116 locations globally. It is a very serious situation, and what has happened is that um, there has been many cancellations of lots of events across the globe, and it's severely impacted the meetings, events, and conference space in business. So these are some things that we are now tasked to having to get our teams through as we continue to move forward with planning meetings events where do meetings and events stand now Um, I've actually recorded this a couple of times because the data continues to change and I am not presenting myself as any type of expert in regards to this particular virus but I wanted to be able to present you with some helpful websites and some helpful simple tips to help you be able to lead your teams appropriately. So planners need to take note, leaders need to take note, and make sure that we are taking steps to prevent the spread of this virus, that we're taking steps to protect our programs, and really just trying to find a way to navigate in the middle. It's really easy for us to be very protective about our industry. Our industry is near and dear to our hearts. Meetings are our livelihood, and people definitely need to meet. And when they meet, great things happen, right? When people meet, magic happens, and we don't want that magic to go away. However, on the other hand, when we are in a situation where there is a virus that is spreading, that we are constantly getting data on but we don't have a lot of conclusive data um, it is very it was a it's a situation that we just need to make sure that we take note and protect accordingly so I wanted to provide you with some helpful tips helpful um, websites that would be able to help you and your team the 
first one that I have was Centers for Disease Control. So this one is probably a website that many of you know about um, if you've been doing any research on this particular 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 virus so it is cdc.gov now there's a whole big section on the coronavirus and um, information has been updated on that website pretty much daily and if not hourly on what's happening um, you'll be able to go through a situation summary how testing is going in the u.s also get a global map on where the virus has spread and then there is a wealth of information including travel information, how to prevent the spread in the communities, how to protect yourself, your family, and some resources for all of the um, healthcare professionals and facilities. So that to me, if you were wanting to go to one place to get all the information that you particularly need in order to make any type of decision in your organization or just for your program, I would go to cdc.gov. Take out, you know, a notebook, or print off some website um, copy on what they're saying so that you are able to be a little bit more grounded into what the situation is. Because I think on any side of the issue that you do have extremists that are going to say, oh my gosh, all you need to do is just wash your hands and you'll be fine. Go ahead, have that meeting. But then on the other side, you have, you know, you don't want to spread the virus. So there is a middle ground that you do need to get to for your particular situation. So I encourage you to explore that and come to the middle. The second website is the WHO organization. So that is the World Health Organization. And again, right when you go to their website, they have a big, huge red box on the coronavirus and giving you information. Um, it also is... Um, updated to what def different remarks that were made um, if you want to go back and look at the media resources and the briefings that the CDC has probably almost on a daily basis you can definitely do that and it's a, a good website for you to also get updated as well and then a website that you probably don't know so much it's called worldometers.info they have a section on their website that goes to the coronavirus uh, coronavirus cases and it really looks at the cases you can also do a view by country and it also gives us a status on the fatalities and then it also gives us um, a status on those that have recovered now it's really interesting that the active cases that are out there we're at about 90 percent of people literally recover from this virus so it is a pretty severe form of the flu and i wouldn't lie if I haven't told you that in looking up some of these cases, um, it, it can be pretty severe to the point where people do get, can get pneumonia. And sometimes I've heard that, um, you know, some long-term implications still have yet to be considered when it comes to those going through um, this particular virus. But it's positive to know that many people do recover and that there's only like 10% of the cases that we have are serious or critical. I think the recovery rate definitely is something that is a positive that we all can take solace in, but then we don't want to underestimate the impact of a flu. Nobody really, really wants to walk into, you know, walk into danger. So um, we want to prevent ourselves from danger as much as we can. So again, we will get into some of those preventative areas that we can work on. But this website, which is worldometers.info, is a great website to just have so that you can see where we are at any given time. And there's some more useful info on that website as well. So next, I have the travel.state.gov. For those that are in the U.S., that is a good website to go to to get specific travel restrictions and um, anything pertaining to, to travel. If you still have meetings where um, attendees are really needing to come into certain meetings, um, you would need to go to that website in order to ensure that you're aware of any restrictions. Um, that website is updated pretty much right away if there's any changes. We are navigating a time where information is probably going to change by the hour. So um, as of yesterday, as of yesterday um, President Trump did restrict travel um, with Europe. So there are details surrounding that restriction on the travel.state.gov website, but it's interesting to know that 
every single day this thing can change depending on the spread and the whole idea at this point is to stop the spread so there are a few meetings websites that I wanted to refer you to because although those are really great um, websites for information and factual information on the actual COVID-19 virus, there are several websites that would be useful for you to just start to explore how is this really impacting our industry? What is our industry stance on everything that's happening? So the first one I would say is the Meetings Means Business website. Um, really great website if you go to um, some of the information that they give and the media resources it really just helps you to have a printout on where we stand as far as an industry you know we believe that meetings are important um, and we really want to make sure that we have all the correct data that is out there going to people and they're making sound judgments as it pertains to their programs um, it also gives you some additional um, guidance around how to prevent um, spread. So really great website there. We also have meetings today. So meetingstoday.com as well as North Star, North Media, North Star Media Group. Both of those websites are a really good blog sources of just all the information coming. You know, I really compliment those that are working in the journalism aspect of this and having to pump out continuous stories regarding how this is affecting certain companies, um, certain events around the industry. Um, they really have been working so hard to be able to put out relevant information that is accurate. So those two websites also are really good websites to, to look at. So those are, again, some really great resources for you to be able to look at to say how that answers a couple questions. What is this, you know, COVID-19 coronavirus that I'm hearing about? Number two, where do I go to get the most relevant information in regards to this virus? And number three, how is this virus then impacting the events industry? So I'm hopeful that's helpful for you to get few resources under your belt for you to be able to take charge to get the information you need in order to make the best decision for your program. So when it comes to this COVID-19 virus, the question is how do we protect our programs moving forward and there are a few areas that I would suggest that you do so. First of all, we don't really know how far that this will go. Every single day is another another opportunity, it's another decision, and we really need to do our part in staying on top of how these changes are happening so we can give the best guidance to our clients. So that's number one, is know the information, know where to go. And I think we covered that in the first part. So the second thing is really keeping communication with your attendees and keeping a communication with your team. So that's really key. Everyone knows that this is impacting the events industry. Everyone is concerned about their health. So as far as what you can do is getting out information to your team in terms of how things are impacting the business, what the next steps are. That's going to be very crucial so that your team does not, that they're well informed and they can take some control over the areas that they can control in their lives. So that's first. People always want to feel like they're in control. And when things are spinning out of control, it, it's kind of tough. So giving them a little bit of a foundation to say, hey, we see you. We know that you're concerned. Here's where we are with things. We'll keep you posted. Those are That's a really good communication to send out to give people a little bit of the foundation and a little bit of security. Secondly, when we're talking about our attendees, the same thing would go for them. They've registered for a meeting. They were looking forward to going. However, everything happening in the media is leading them to be a little bit fearful of, of them coming to a program. So totally understand those concerns, right? So any communication, again, that would help address what those concerns are in saying, 
hey, we understand that this is going on. Here's the steps that we've taken in order to help this current situation as it relates to this program. And here's what you can see moving forward as this situation continues to evolve. Those are some really good communications to send out keeping people updated and if you can keeping them updated in a timely manner it can get a little bit confusing and a little bit worrisome if um, meetings cancel very last minute when people are flying in the air getting to a program we know sometimes event leaders it's really hard to make those decisions and sometimes those decisions come down to that timing unfortunately but if you can give attendees a little bit of time before they are actually preparing to go that could be ideal but again every situation is different and no one can control sometimes all of the elements that are needed in order to make an actual decision on these programs. So notifying the attendees ahead of time, making sure that they feel secure in the meetings, making sure any of those attendees that might be coming from areas that are restricted, that they are given an alternative perhaps. Virtual meetings right now is a really um, good alternative and a plan B to have virtual meetings, whether you're doing it on video or you just you know, attending via audio, at least those uh, attendees that cannot get to the conference have some sort of a connection and they can not miss out on any of the business transactions or conversations that need to happen um, as a part of any program. So that's good. So making sure you have a good communication plan. If you haven't looked at it in a while, look at your communication plan, figure out, hey, what do I need to do in order to give it some type of adjustment? So we talked about a communication plan. Another area which we would probably need to talk about is just making sure that um, sanitary measures are taking place with your programs. So as we all have probably heard, the guidance is to wash your hands. I'm not sure if people weren't doing that already, but wash your hands under water, hot water, 20 seconds. It helps reduce the spread of germs. So if that is done, that can definitely be very beneficial to the situation. Also, using hand sanitizer is very beneficial. Using um, masks only if you're sick. I know there is not many masks out there, but if you do have masks, maybe you just wait until if you're sick to use them or make them be of use to people who are sick to stop the spread versus you being a healthy person utilizing the mask. So that is the situation with masks. Um, Now, there is guidance out there to really restrict large gatherings of people. And, um, you know, this really implicates and affects our area, which is the meetings, events, conferences, trade shows, all events. And, you know, we really have to take this into consideration. Um, Although we do love this industry, um, it is our livelihood, like I mentioned before, you really need to ask yourself, is, is this, is this meeting critical for us to have? If so, we put the precautions in place. But other than that, we need to make sure that we're preventing or somehow preventing the spread of the virus by having too many people in one space. And so I think there's guidance out there for large gatherings of 250 or more. Um, Don't quote me on that. There might be more guidance out there per the CDC website, but definitely look at that and make your decision accordingly. I know even right now, schools in different states are being, um, you know, converted to more online environments versus having to go into the actual school. Um, I know that there's different activities that might occur in people's communities that are currently being rescheduled or postponed for a while. So really looking at the alternative solutions that you might have if you do need to meet that would be probably the most beneficial beneficial thing for you to be able to do during this particular period in time. Okay, um, make the best decisions that you can. You know, this, this is something that is unprecedented. We haven't really been here before. Sure, we've been through 9-11 and H1N1 and SARS and 
there are a lot of different um, outbreaks that have occurred and emergent situations that have occurred in our lifetime. But this is a little bit different. This is the first time I can say that we've been in a pandemic situation that's affecting globally. Usually it's a region of the country or the, of the globe, but not globally. So make the best decisions that you can for the safety of your attendees and for um, the, you know, the safety of your business and, you know, go from there. Um, so also I wanted to mention that there are many companies out there that are restricting travel um, that if you haven't restricted any travel yet um, not to say that you should but definitely go to the um, travel.state.gov website to see if that's something that you need to be considering making sure that you're looking at the information and then finding out how it's applicable to you and then communicating to the people that need to be communicated with so those are some things that we have um, I just encourage you to always continue to stay close to the news, continue to make sure that you're fully aware and updated. Don't feed into all of the hysteria on either side of this particular issue. Stay grounded, stay sound, stay in the middle to make the best possible decisions for your team. Um, and sometimes in this time, there are hard decisions that need to be made as well. And, you know, just all I can say about that is just do those particular things with integrity and with your full heart, you know, um, and that really will help because then you would be at a better place kind of on the, on the, on the end of it. So make plan B's, plan C's, plan EFG's if you have to, and continuing to adjust your plans as new information comes out. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers are really going out to those that are highly impacted by this, not only with the sickness and with the fatalities, but this also can mean jobs for people. Um, this is this is people's livelihoods. There are jobs that are being lost. Um, we're seeing it every day. And hopefully there are some plans in the future out there that perhaps I know the ministry the administration has been alluding to certain certain stimulus packages that will be able to help but I really really sincerely hope that for the people that are have their boots on the ground that have lost their job or that are really doing this and getting affected by this um, are compensated and are um, taken care of in the long run so really I just hang in there um everybody i know we will get past this i know we might have some scars after but definitely hang in there do the best you can make the best decisions you can and you know and and keep on stepping so thank you so much for listening again if you really enjoy this podcast i just encourage you to like and share and subscribe um if there's anything you would like to hear about definitely um reach out to me i would love to hear your comments thank you so much and have a great day guys bye